So here's a review question involving the method of Lagrange multipliers. We've got a temperature function given by big T and you've got some metal plate sitting in the XY plane at each point in that, pla in that uh, plate you have a temperature associated with each, each point. Okay, so we're asked to use the method of Lagrange multipliers to determine the maximum temperature when you restrict the points to lie on the circle x squared plus y squared equals 8. So let's work through that step by step. There's a definite method with these kinds of Lagrange uh, max-min type problems. So the, the aim is to, we want to maximize T subject to the constraint Okay. All right, so to do this, we can use Lagrange's uh, approach, which says the following. We solve the following system of equations. Now, this means gradient or grad T, grad G. The lambda, remember, is a constant known as the Lagrange multiplier. There may be one, there may be more than one. Now, the way that we've looked at these kinds of problems in lectures is to define the Lagrangian function and then calculate the critical points. So that's the way I'm going to do it here. So let L be defined in this way. And we solve for the critical points of L. Okay, so let me just squeeze another line in down here. This is our Lagrangian function. Okay. So, let's calculate dl dx, dl dy, and dl d lambda, if I set that equal to zero, it's just the same as the constraint equation, g equals zero. So, so we're going to solve the following. dl dx, so let's differentiate this with respect to x, holding all the other variables fixed. So I'm going to get a 6y, and I'm going to get a minus 2 lambda x. If I calculate dl dy, well, I'm going to get a 6x from this term, and I'm going to get a minus 2 lambda y from the uh, second part. And Remember, g equals 0, which is just x squared plus um, y squared minus 8 equals 0. OK, so now we've reached a critical point, no pun intended, in the solution. How do we solve these equations? And this is the potentially frustrating point with, with students because they get to this point and then it's like, oh, how do I solve these equations? Well, 
One method that we've looked at is taking the equations and using some sort of multiplication. Okay? So if you look closely, if I multiply the first equation by y, I'll get a 2 lambda xy there. If I multiply the second equation by x, I'll get a 2 lambda xy there. So the two terms, the, two, the second two terms in each equation will be identical. What I can do then is take one equation away from the other and I'll get lots of simplifications. Okay? So, let's multiply everything here by x and multiply, I'm sorry, by y. Sorry, let me adjust that. And in the second case, we'll multiply everything by x. Okay, and the aim is to get the same two terms here and here. That, that's how I made that choice. So, I'll get the following. Now, if I add these two equations together, I'll get x squared equals y squared after a bit of simplification. Okay, so, so we're in a good spot now. What I can do now is substitute one of these into my constraint equation. So let's say I, I substitute for the y squared. I'll get x squared plus x squared equals 8. I can solve that for x. Okay, so this will become x squared. I'll get something like um, x squared equals 4. So, x equals plus or minus 2. Alright, so let's go back and find the corresponding y components for each of those x values. Well, again, using the constraint equation, What am I going to get? Well, if x squared, uh, if x equals plus or minus 2, x squared is going to be 4. So I can rearrange this again and get y squared equals 4. So y is going to be plus or minus 2. So, we've got four points there. Okay? We just need to alternate the signs on those points. Okay, so our points of interest are the following. 2, 2, where the signs are the same. Minus 2, 2, where the signs are slightly different. 2, minus 2, and minus 2, minus 2. Okay, so now we're almost finished. All we need to do is take those four points and test the temperature at each of those points. So these are our points of interest. Let's test the temperature at each point, then pluck out the largest values, value or values, and then disregard the rest because we're only interested in the maximum temperature. Okay, so the idea now is to test our points of interest. Okay, so this is our temperature function, so let's just plug in each point into our temperature function. Okay, so if x equals 2, y equals 2, we're going to get something like 24. Same with um, if I put in, say, minus 2, minus 2. 
Here I'm going to get minus 24. Okay, so now we want to look down that list and pull out the largest value or values. You can see 24 is the largest value. We're only interested in the maximum. So let's just choose those two um, uh, points. There are, there are two specific points of interest and the maximum value uh, of the temperature is 24. Okay, if they asked you to calculate the minimum value as well, well, you'd have to take into account the minus 24 and the two points associated with that.